Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are going to connect our Monoprice Mini Select V2 up to Octoprint. And then we're going to connect Cura 4.1 to Octoprint, which a lot of people seem to be having a problem with. So I think that'll help a bunch of people out to show the whole process. Great. Shut up, alerts. All right. So the printer does not show up by default. I had a lot of problems with this and I actually had to add a plug-in to make it work. So you can leave it at auto auto, that generally works. But you need to go down to your plugins and you would hit get more. I've already added it so it doesn't show up in get more. But there is a plugin called Malian Monoprice Connection Fix 0.1.1. .1. That will help you get your Monoprice printer connected to Octoprint. And we turn that on. Now, one of the things you're going to find, and I'll cover this right now, is that your printer safety check is going to trigger on your Monoprice because it does not have thermal runaway protection. You have the option of fixing that which I'm not going to go into. You'll have to do research on how you can accomplish that if your particular printer has the ability to do that, or the simpler way is to turn it off. Now being aware that turning it off actually does make it so your printer, if it ever overheats, will continuously print and probably burn up. So if you do end up turning this off, you do not want to leave your printer unattended while it is printing. Just keep that in mind. Some other handy things I have added that are beyond the default that's come to mind are the EEPROM editor for the MPSM, emergency stop button, of course the Malian Monoprice connection fix, Octolapse, and YouTube Live. Those are the ones I typically load on an Octoprint box. So that works out pretty well. And then it'll ask you to restart, so go ahead and restart. But now I've reached the most important thing. We actually need to set up the printer profile. Now this is what I found on the web as being the way you set these up. So if you're adding a new printer, you're going to name it whatever you want. I named mine MP Select Mini V2. You can name it 3D Printer if you like, if you only have one. But that'll kind of help you understand where you are printing and I have four printers so I need to make sure that they're all labeled by name otherwise it gets a little confusing and if you intend to get more even if you don't you probably will you probably want to name this something that makes sense so you can identify the particular printer that you're printing to. Now you got your print bread and build volume you're going to leave this at rectangular origin is going to be the lower left yes you do have a heated bed and your width, depth, and height, also known as X, Y, and Z, are all 120. So put 120 in each of these. And I believe they're set for 200 by default. A little too big for our printer, so set them for 120. Your axis will be 9,000. I believe that is incorrect. I don't believe that is 9,000. Uh, let me see if I still got that pulled up. And I don't. So let me pull this up real quick again, because I don't want to give you wrong information. It is 9,000. So 9,000, 9,000, 90, and 300. And this sets up your print vol or sets up your axis. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about this. I'm gonna have to uh, double check those. But that's what so far I've come up with as being information that I've found. Hot in an extruder, your nozzle diameter is 0 0.4, and your number of extruders is one. This is assuming you have the default loaded and haven't made any customizations or changes to your system. And this is what it comes with, so not terribly hard. So we can confirm it. Make sure this one is set as default. 
I always set up a generic rep wrap when I'm doing it because I don't want to set the printer parameters while I'm doing the installation. Uh, the rest of it can stay pretty much the same. If you've never gone through and set up an Octoprint box before, you'll want to go through every single one of the settings to make sure that everything is as you want it to be. And once it is, you can go down here to the plugins and you can configure them away as you choose. And this will tell you exactly what is going on. Now I do not have a camera loaded up to my 3D printer right now to my Octoprint box. Otherwise I could go to uh, time lapse and terminal control. That's where I need to go. And it would be displaying the printer itself. But I don't have the uh, webcam attached yet because my the arm that I use to connect it hasn't uh, isn't working out very well so I actually need to print a new arm for the Monoprice Mini, and I'll do that tomorrow. It's late, and I just want to get it set up and working and do a simple test, and I already have one of those set up and ready to go. You won't be able to see the results of it, but you'll be able to see the job process. So then the next thing to do is to restart Octoprint, and when it comes back up, if it does say disconnected, make sure you click connect, and you should end up in a connection state similar to this, where it says operational is your current state, file, your time-lapse, blah, blah, blah. We covered that in the other video. And that window is just about the firmware problem. Other than that, your Octoprint is set. Now, if you leave this box open, and now we're going to go and download Cura, you're going to find that you do not see when you go to make a printer you don't see anywhere to add an octoprint printer now I added just by default when I set it up the monoprice select mini v2 which is what I have and I did that simply because I wanted it to have the parameters on there and I wanted it to have something but that requires it to be directly connected, and mine is not directly connected to my computer. It's directly connected to Octoprint. So now we have to get Octoprint to talk to the box. Now, by default, the version 4.1 of Octoprint does not, or of Akira, uh, does not come loaded with the plugin for Octoprint. So what you need to do is you need to go in here to the uh, plugins. And it will usually uh, it shows up right about here. So scroll down a little bit and you'll see it. And it will be called Octoprint Connection. And you'll need to click it and install it. You can install any of these other ones while you're at it. Uh, there are a couple handy ones that may help you out. And that may help you in a lot of different ways. But for right now, the only thing I have loaded is the Octoprint Connection and that's all. Now I downloaded this image off of Thingiverse. It is a Harley Davidson uh, key fob and I'm looking for something to attach to my keychain to identify which ones are my bike keys and which ones are my Jeep keys and which ones are my Ram keys and which ones are my other Jeep keys. So I got two Jeeps. I got to distinguish a bike and a truck. Now, the one of the Jeeps and the bike are pretty easy to tell apart. The keys aren't terribly hard, but it's a quick print, so I figured I would use this as a test. The Ram and the newer Jeep actually use the same style key, so having something on here that's a little more distinguishable would probably be beneficial. So I'll probably download or create basing on this on a template so much for size uh, to make one of those so I can tell which one's which a little bit easier than flipping the key over and seeing reading the back of it. Now when I actually got this, this is a 120 by 120 bed and the key fob overhang was overhanging to like here. So this would be like something you'd stick on, like a key to the bathroom at a gas station that you wouldn't want to be able to have people walk off with. 
So I, tr I uh, actually auto scaled it down to about a little, sli just slightly more, like a sliver more, sliver more than two inches. And that makes it a little bit more manageable for what it's going to be. And even though it shows it in yellow, it will print in whatever filament you are printing in. So looking underneath, here's my points of contact. I've got plenty of points of contact. I don't have to worry about anything. I have very little not contacting the board, if any. So this should be a pretty flat, simple, easy print. And then it gave me the option to slice it. It actually gave me an error at first, and I reload the models. But I sliced it, and it was good to go. Now we're sitting at the page where it wants us to print. And what do we need to do to connect to our Octoprint printer? So if we go into our printers, manage printers, you will now have this connect Octoprint button. And if you click on that, it'll bring up exactly what it is you're connecting to. Now, you've got your version, you've got your address, and you've got your API key. When your API key is going to be blank. So if you click request here, it's actually going to open a window and try to log into this Octoprint server, and it will actually request your key. Your Octoprint will actually display a message up here saying a certain device is requesting your API. Is this okay? And you can click allow, and it will actually fill it in automatically so you don't have to type it in anymore. Really, really good. And then click connect, and you'll be connected. And once you're connected, you will actually get windows like this that actually tell us options. We can save the file we just made to file, or we can print it in Octoprint directly. So we're just going to send it over to Octoprint. And it's telling me my printer's offline, and it's not. So we're probably disconnected because it took too long getting to this point. I'm kind of glad I have these issues because let's turn off the webcam image. Because we're not going to get anywhere. probably need to restart Kira. So let's save our file. There we go. And let's restart Kira. Because we went in there and fiddled with it, so it's obviously going to require us to reload it because we, uh, we did stuff. Anyway, it has actually loaded the file over into Octoprint anyway even though it told me the printer was offline. And it is currently... Let's go back over to temperature. It should be ramping up. Unless I have it not set to print right away. And I don't. So let's tell it to print it. And now, it is warming up the bed and warming up the tool. And this is going to take 18 minutes to print, so it's not horrible. And this will tell me what, my, what I need to fine-tune after this. Once Cure is reloaded, I'm guessing it will be a lot easier to... Uh, get this set up and running. Anyway, now that we're here, we can monitor the print job. And now it knows that the printer build plate, and this is what, so you don't need to keep the web page open for the printer, even though this is amusing and entertaining in itself. Cura will actually give you the same screen and tell you what the build plate is, what the extruder temperature is, positioning, things of that nature, what it's printing, uh, about how long it's going to take and how much is left. 
and what it's doing at the time. So it'll give you some options and some things to do. So it'll tell you what's going on. Uh, I believe if we had the webcam turned on, it would actually show you that. Like I said, I have to print a new webcam mount, and that's a good 10-hour print. And uh, it is almost midnight, and I'm not leaving this printer unattended to run because I don't trust it yet. So we'll find out what kind of stability we get out of this thing. We've got to print some other parts for some of our other printers and get those up and running and fixed again because some of them need some fine-tuning and work. But first, I just wanted to print something simple so that I could see what areas I need to improve in. Of course, you won't get to see the final product, but you will get to see everything get up to temperature as it goes up. And I'm just basically talking through this so you can see how long it takes the printer to spool up from cold to start printing, and I will let you know when it starts printing. And we will be doing some more time lapses and prints once I get that new arm set up so that I can have the webcam on there. But right now it's just not feasible and the webcam will not stay steady because the uh, gorilla arm that I used to have is uh, actually out on my bike right now and the s less stable bridge arm that I have is too shaky and as it prints it actually uh, shakes and doesn't hold the image stable so and we are now zeroing and it is going moving to the center and the printer is about eight feet away from me so if you can hear this at all especially over my fan I'd actually be surprised but it is not as loud as some of the other ones anyway that's it for this video. Please post your comments down below. I can make a follow-up video if there's more information you want to know. I actually did this almost as I did it myself. So I answered a lot of my own questions and hoped that some other people might have similar questions to what I did. I uh, couldn't cover everything that I wanted to cover and I wasn't sure what other people might be having issues with. But the one thing that I did notice was that connection fix, 0.1.1, I think it was, will get you going, and it, mine wouldn't work otherwise. So that was the kind of kicker to it and the trick. And uh, with the parameters that I put in there, everything seems to be working so far okay. But uh, if I make any adjustments or changes, I'll make another video to show what made it better, and then I'll be able to do some recording. But I did want to get this out there for you guys so you could get some assistance with it and especially the guys that are having trouble with Kira 4.1 and higher because they changed where the uh, tool toolbar the toolbox was to get to the plugins so thanks for watching and I will catch you guys later if you have any interest in following up on this or have any questions definitely leave them in the comments down below subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything because I'm going to be doing a lot more things with the mini select v2 and uh, she's probably doing, I have an opportunity to do a lot of uh, maintenance and repair videos because uh, my, uh, my E10 is having some problems and it kind of got warped from the heat, which is a common issue. So I'll be doing some repairs on that and my Creality needs a little bit of help too. So I'm going to have to clean that up and get it back into spec so that it works. I think those are kind of interesting videos. You may enjoy it, so we'll be doing some of that. So stay tuned for those, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.